Hello and welcome to the Hornby Magazine Workshop. You join myself and Mike here on the Hornby Magazine Test Track for another exclusive product reveal. This time it's from Acura Scale. So Mike, what have we got? So on the layout today we've got a brand new collection of Mark II carriages from Acura Scale from Double O Gauge, modeling the missing link, it's the Mark II B coaches. So as you can see, some very high fidelity models. So Mike, what have we got in front of us? Okay, so we've got a collection of uh, pre-production samples. So these aren't the finished product, these are the first engineering samples from Acura Scale showing what they're doing so far with the Mark II to launch the product. And um, the sharp-eyed amongst our viewers will recognize that actually, there aren't just British Railways ones here as well, there are actually Northern Irish Railways ones here too. Uh, because the range is spanning both the Acura Scale double O gauge and the Irish Railway models, uh, well, still double O gauge, but uh, for Irish Railway layouts as well. See, ordinarily, you probably couldn't tell the difference between Irish and uh, British uh, trains. However, they've really gone to town, like you say. What are some of the differences that we can expect? OK, so actually, uh, whilst it was the same basic shell for the Mark IIb, um, there were quite significant detailed differences in the vehicle types which are built for the Irish railway system. Uh, so for starters, there's a specific driving trailer. Um, for push pull operation. Um, there's the dedicated buffet, which I believe was the only Mark IIb dedicated buffet coach was for the Irish railway system. Uh, and there's also um, probably the most distinctive vehicle of them as well, because it's got a massive pair of exhaust in the roof, is the generator van as well, uh, which really did stand out. Actually, I understand it actually had a different type of bogey at one end in order to sustain the weight of having the generator at one end of the coach as well. And of course, talking of bogeys, They've gone to one extreme, haven't they? Uh, well, yeah, oh, actually, a few extremes. I mean, uh, in terms of bogey detail, um, these are outstanding, really. Um, I don't think there's any other word for it. Uh, and um, it, it gets better. So if you're a British double O gauge modeler with British Railways Mark II coaches, you've got correctly width um, bogeys for the four foot eight, eight, eight and a half inch gauge railway. And they've gone to the extremes of making a different bogey tooling for the Irish five foot three inch gauge coaches, uh, which is physically wider, uh, and you can actually see the difference when you look at these coaches. It's surprising. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially once you know. As soon as you know it's there, it's like, wow, that's really obvious that they have actually made the effort to go down that route. So on top of that, what are some of the other details we can expect on these models? Okay, so there's lots to take in with these coaches. I mean, these are, like I said, they're pre-production models, so there's still more work to go on these. Uh, but you can expect a lot of separately fitted parts. We've got a lot of separately fitted uh, etched metal steps around handrails around the end of the coaches. Uh, you've got the proper rubber bumps around the end of the doors, which is the, well, the, probably one of the most distinguishing features out outwardly of the Mark IIb. Uh, is actually the it was the first of the Mark II series where the doors wrapped around the end. So the Mark II A's, the doors were just part of the body side and the tumble home of the end wrapped around to it. Uh, but with the Mark II B, that whole end of the coach opens. Uh, and then also distinctively for the Mark II B's as well, you'll notice that they don't have central doors on the uh, on the coaches either, uh, which is a feature that started with the Mark II B stock. Uh, in terms of those details though, I mean, there's, there's so many separately fitted parts on these. Each time I look at the coaches, I see another separately fitted part on them, uh, which is fantastic. You've got different underframe configurations to suit the different vehicle types. Uh, you've got uh, standard things like NEM coupling pockets on all coaches uh, with small tension locks fitted. And actually, uh, they're also on kinematic couplings as well, which means that they're really nice and close on the straights. But when they turn to go on curves, the couplings open out to allow the coaches to go around the curves so they don't buffer lock and catch on each other. Uh, there's also different lengths of buffer to suit uh, open and closed buffers as well. Uh, so buffers, when they're at the end of a train, they'd be in an open position. When the gangways are coupled together, they go into a closed position, which is slightly shorter. Um, and then also, they've all got factory-fitted lighting as well. Uh, and uh, it's all magnetically operated as well. So you take a magnetic wand over the top of the coaches and it turns the lights on or off as well. It is horribly satisfying. It is. And <laughs> also satisfying is the fact that lighting works with both analog and DCC systems straight out of the box as well. So you don't need decoders for these, you just take them out of the box, put them on the track, your lights work. Um, the only difference to that is the driving trailer for the Irish Railway system, which does need a decoder to power the head and tail lights on it. And as you said earlier, the, for me actually the gangways, I mean they're touching, 
as you can see in the in the footage now. Um, it's incredible. Have we seen that before? Um, I've not seen that in a ready-to-run out-of-the-box model to this extreme. Um, I don't want to say extreme, actually this kind of level of quality, really. So I, I was, I was, we were both a little bit apprehensive when we first saw these, going, oh, are they going to go around corners? And actually, we put them on the inner circuit of Toffeydale, which has got the tightest curve on the layer, which is good for testing things. Uh, so that's down to second radius going through the tunnel behind us, which is even greater test because we can't see if things um, come apart down there. It does cause problems from time to time. But they ran absolutely faultlessly. We've had them good running for pretty much the whole day in the office here on the ring around the test track. Um, they're taking in S-bends coming around through the diversion route, they're taking in the crossings, they're taking in the second radius as well. Uh, and it's a really nice piece of, of model design that they've got them so close. And it's one of the things actually um, is really nice with me, actually, that the, they've, they've thought about the position of the front of the coupling bar, of the, of the actual coupling hook rather. Um, and rather than being standing proud of the gangway, which like a lot of coaches would do in, in typical form and miss even come in, um, these are actually set back just behind the gangway. So it means that when you take up the tension of the tension lock, you've got a little bit of gap between the gangways, but not very much at all. So looking back at the prototype bike, where were these coaches seen on the network? Okay, so well, these Mark II Bs were introduced in 1969. They were built in Derby. Uh, there were 111 of them in total, and that was split between three different vehicle types. Uh, so there was a first corridor, uh, there was a brake first corridor, there was also a tourist second open. So those are the main three vehicle types. And actually, we've got each one of those is sat here in front of us today. So it's the, the TSO here, and we've got the BFK in the middle, and then the FK at the end. Uh, it's quite distinctive for the corridor coaches because you can see the corridor partition inside. So, uh, and they've gone to detail inside of those as well, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so in terms of operation, they entered service with, uh, well, mainly with the Western region and the Eastern region to start with. Uh, so they ran with things like Class 52 Westerns and Brush Type 4, so the Class 47s as well. Uh, and then they, uh, in later life, they started to spread their wings and actually ultimately ended up across pretty much the entire British Railway network across all five regions. Uh, particularly well known for use on the Southwestern Main Line with Class 50s, up the Waterloo, Waterloo to Exeter services. Uh, and in terms of liveries, they start off in BR Blue and Grey. Uh, and later in life, they ended up in liveries like, uh, for example, Network Southeast, Regional Railways. Uh, some of them carried the Trans Pennine livery as well for running on the uh, uh, Trans Pennine services. So, plenty of choices in livery over their period of, of life on the railway. So, maybe a hint of what we'll see next. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. So, and then also at the end of their careers, uh, when in the 2000s, they were also seen on things like the uh, the Rumney diesel haul trains as well, with like EWS Class 37s on the front as well. Uh, whilst I think some have gone into uh, charge trains and finally some in preservation as well. So I think we all know you know about British stock. It's time to cross the Irish Sea and really test your knowledge. Can you tell us about the Irish stock we've got in front of us? Okay, so the uh, Irish Mark II Bs, uh, which have been made by Irish Railway models, they were introduced in the 1970s, so they followed on soon after the British Railway stock. Um, importantly, had those different gauge bogies to run the five foot three inch gauge track there. Uh, they were originally built for the uh, Belfast to Dublin Enterprise service. Um, which, uh, well, there was different coach types, very distinctively different coach types like we mentioned earlier in the video. So you've got the uh, generator car, which is very much unique to the Irish railway system. And actually the catering vehicle is the only Mark IIB catering coach there ever was anywhere. Uh, there are also second open coaches and the driving van trailer, which again was very distinctive to being a part of the Irish railway's fleet as well. Um, they remained in service there uh, through different types of haulage um, over the years. So they had, originally had the hundreds of Bobo diesels working with them in push ball format, then they went to the uh, class 111. Uh, locomotives as well, and they ended up in the hands of the General Motors 201 class as well in the, the end from sort of 1995 onwards to the end of their career with the Irish Railways in, I think, 1999, the last one we were born. So that's point proven then. I know a little bit about Irish Railways as well, yes. <laughs> so now we know all about the model, it's time to get some more detail. So Mike, what liveries are coming for these models? Okay, so we've got a, a nice choice of different liveries for these coaches. So for the British Railway stock, we're going to have BR Blue and Grey. Uh, there'll be Network Southeast, and there'll also be the Trans Pennine livery as well in the first round of releases. Uh, some nice colourful liveries there, and some classics with the BR Blue and Grey as well. Uh, and then for the uh, Irish Railway stock, there's going to be a couple of different periods of liveries on those for the Enterprise workings as well, so be able to choose which colour scheme you want to suit your own rolling stock. And of course, the question on everyone's tongues at home will be, how much are these models going to be? Okay, so the uh, the BR coaches, they're going to be sold individually, so separate coaches, and they'll be costing £59.95 each, and that's with all the bells and whistles as well, so you get all the lighting features in there as well. Uh, while the Irish Railway stock, that will be sold as triple packs, and they'll be priced at €199.99 for a triple pack. Very nice. So, I've got to pin you down. What's your favourite detail of them? Uh, my favourite detail, actually, I really like the lighting, and I like the close couplings as well, but actually the lighting really stands out. I love the fact that you've got the 
working with any type of control system, you've got the magnetic control to turn the lights on and off as well. I really like that kind of fuss-free, hands-off kind of operation of lighting and the fact I haven't got to press accessory buttons or loco addresses to change the lighting on and off and the coaches just waft of wand over the top and it turns on and off. It is very satisfying. It is, yeah, and it's all got to stay alive in it as well. It's all really good stuff, that lighting. What about you, got a favourite piece? For me, it has to be the gangways finally on a coach touch. We've always had, we've had close couplings, we've had close models, but we've never had them both together on a ready to run model out of the box. And we finally got it. And it makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and like we said earlier on in the video, it does work as well. We have tested it here on, yep. on, on the Home Magazine test track. It's gone around the second radius curves. It's done the S-Bends. It does actually work as well. It's really impressively done. I think a game changer. Definitely. Right. And of course, the last thing is availability. When can we expect them? So these are now, they're due at the moment in the third quarter of 2022. Uh, so not that long to wait in the grand scheme of things. I mean, we're, we're at uh, pre-production first engineering samples right now. Uh, so there's lots of work for the Curascale team to do to, to bring these up to standard to go through. Well, they'll have another sample to, to look at revisions for the toolings and things. Because uh, these are really a proving sample to show how the first moulds have worked. There might be things need to amend on moulds, how things come out of the moulds and anything like that as well. Um, so they'll be looking into all that, making any adjustments that need to be made, finessing the actual assembly process as well. Uh, and then we'll start to see things like livery samples come through as well. Wonderful. I can't wait for livery samples because these will really look quite nice coloured up. They certainly will, yeah. And of course you'll see those livery samples first with Hobby Magazine. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget if you want to read the full feature on these lovely models, click the link down below. And as ever, I'll say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.